Introducing the Flake and Twinstax camera, a homemade solution for instant photographic gratification. It incorporates the beauty and depth of field in its two large format lenses for the convenience of our quick development film packs. Let's take a look at just how this camera works, shall we? Notice that this camera is composed of two lenses. The upper lens is for composition and focusing, while the lower lens is for taking the shot, as it is responsible for exposing the film toward the rear of the camera. Together, these lenses share the same lens board, thus travel the same distance while the user focuses. When the lens is focused using the viewing screen, it is also in focus at the film plane of the camera. Once the shot is taken, it is processed through two rollers within the battery-powered drive mechanism. The motor drive mechanism is housed within the Instax Y300 camera body shown here. The image produced from the upper lens reflects onto a mirror precisely positioned and angled at 45 degrees. The mirror then projects the image upward toward the viewing screen, and then inverts the image vertically so that it can be viewed right side up. Do you note, however, that the horizontal view is still flipped, and not remedied by the mirror as was the vertical view. Now let's have a go at taking a shot, shall we? Ensure our film is loaded into the camera. You may need to remove the rear camera body guard to allow access into the film loading bay. If you plan on having the camera accompany you on foot, please be sure to fasten the elastic comfort padded neck strap onto the side rail guards. Similar to other view cameras, the first step is to determine exposure of the scene by using a light meter. For this demonstration, metering has previously been completed, and we will now make adjustments to the taking lenses shutter to allow the appropriate amount of light to expose the film. Primary exposure is adjusted with aperture and shutter speed. In most cases, aperture is first adjusted depending on the desired aesthetic of the scene, followed by the appropriate compensating shutter speed, given by the metering. Do note, however, that the fast action scene should take shutter speed as priority over aperture. Adjustment levers and dials for aperture and shutter speed are shown here. The next step is to cock the shutter of both lenses, but hold open the upper lens to allow its use for composition and focus. For this particular lens, this is done by pulling the lever at the top of the shutter assembly. With the upper lens open, it is now time to compose and focus the shot. Open the focusing hood and observe the projected image on the viewing screen. Once the shot is framed, grasp the lens board and move it in or out until the image is in focus. With the image in focus, we are now ready to take the shot. Now a word of caution here is due. Recall that this camera has two lenses separated by some vertical distance. Because of this, each lens sees slightly different images. The difference is more dramatic the closer the subject being framed is to the camera. To combat this effect, known as parallax error, we must utilize the parallax compensation gauge affixed to the camera platform. Note that key distances are marked on the gauge, with the bracketed frame representing the observing screen, and the small x the subject of interest. Observe that as the lens board moves out, the subject marker moves down. This happens much more significantly at distances closer than 3 feet. As an example, if one were interested in capturing the subject at 2 and 1 half feet away, an object normally centered on the focusing screen would need to be moved down to near the bottom edge. Keep in mind, however, that while the subject is near the bottom of the view screen via the upper lens, it is now centered on the film image plane of the lower lens, as desired. Finally, the shot can be taken via a shutter release cable affixed to the right grip post. Do be careful not to make any sudden movements while holding the camera, as this can cause the captured image to blur. This is especially true for slow shutter speeds typical with low light conditions, such as indoors, or those equipped without a flash bulb. The image is now ready for development. Hold the drive mechanism processing switch in the closed position until the film completely ejects from the back of the camera. Do be careful not to hold too long as this will cause the next film exposure to eject and process prematurely. As a final step, we should take care in tracking the number of exposures left for later use. The film counter sits above the lens board and is affixed to the upper lens glare shield. Move the film counter tab left to indicate the number of exposures remaining. This convenient counter greatly reduces the chance that a precious moment is missed due to an empty film bay. Now then, let's put it all together. Meet at the scene to determine the appropriate exposure. Set aperture and shutter speed at the lower taking lens. Open the upper lens. Open the viewing hood to frame and focus the shot on the viewing screen. Compensate for parallax error if need be.
take the shot with the shot release cable. Develop the film by holding the drive mechanism processing switch. Set the remaining exposure a film counter. Now, isn't that easy? That's all there is to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction and overview of the freaking Twinstax camera.